back after a bit of a short break. Uh, nice little update for you coming up now. Um, think about just five Blu-rays. Uh, got some decent Blu-rays though. Uh, had a few for Father's Day, a few presents for Father's Day as well, so it needs sort of mixed in with this update. But I've got about 18 DVDs, it's quite a few really, a bit, I think a bit more than last month, I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, I have been sort of a bit more selective what I've been buying recently. I think I've been buying a bit too much, sort of rubbish if you like. So uh, I thought I'd just, a uh, few films, you know, I've been on my sort of wish list for a while, I had my eye on, and um, sort of come down in price a bit, so I've got bought them. But uh, look, I'll come with the Blu rays first anyway, just five. Um, I got the Slasher Classics collection. I uh, picked this up quite cheaply, and it's been out for a while. But um, this is the first. I've already got this on DVD as well. But it's uh, Intruder, which is uh, one of the last sort of truly great slashes of the '80s. Really, it's a very, very good film. Um, I think pretty much all the gore is intact in this version as well. But I have got the US Region One DVD of that. But I just thought I'd buy the upgrade. Plus, I'm trying to collect all these as well, and it's a good price. So uh, that's Intruder. But, uh, don't need to say anything about that. I think most people have heard of that film. Uh, everyone knows I'm quite a big fan of Pete Walker and uh, just a couple of the Pete Walker horror films I'm sort of missing there and I managed to pick one of them up on Blu-ray and uh, that's The House of Mortal Sin which is uh, another really good Pete Walker movie um, I think one of his better ones and um, basically it's like a story about this sort of like um, this priest and uh, I think this, this woman goes to confession and he sort of gets a bit obsessed with the priest does and uh, uh, sort of uh, tries to teach her like sort of to be um, I'll you know, have like high morals and things like that, and he ends up being a bit psychotic, the priest. But uh, you now, a good British sort of a uh, British horror film there from the 70s. Uh, decent acting, quite a few famous sort of faces from the 70s in there as well. Recognised I recognise a few. Um, I think, um, I think, was it Stephanie Beach in it or someone? There's quite a few people in it who's quite famous, but uh, there's no cast on that. I'm sure it was Stephanie Beach or someone like that in there, but there's a couple of 70s, there's someone out of the 70s sitcom as well. Uh, one of the guys at Georgian Mills, and I think he was in it. There's a lot of sort of famous faces from the 70s. But a decent little Pete Walker film, so that's okay. I managed to get Sharknado 3 now. I watched it a couple of nights ago. Um, didn't like it as much as the first, but I did think it was a lot better than the second one. Uh, a lot more. This is one of the most action packed of the Sharknado's as well. It was incredibly over the top, especially the last sort of 20 minutes. But it was, you know, if you, if you, don't, if you don't like stuff to be realistic, um, I wouldn't watch it. It is really over the top, but it's enjoyable. And uh, I had to get the German releases. I don't think it's out on Blu-ray in the UK. I was looking around Amazon everywhere, and all you could get was a DVD. So I've bought the uh, the German import of that, the FSK 16 one. And uh, strange enough, I've gone through the Blu-ray, and it's all completely in English. There is like an in a German language didn't put over the top, but from what I can see, all the extras and everything are in English as well. So that's decent. It's just as good as getting the uh, English Blu-ray there. So shot nine L three, um, not quite as good as the first, but definitely better than the second. Uh, one I've been after for ages, um, been on my wish list one, and I'll, it was on my actual wish list before it was even released on you know DVD or Blu-ray or anything, and it's just um, one I've been dying for them to release because I remember seeing the cover of it years ago, and always was interested in seeing it on you know on VHS. But I was seeing it in you know, the video local video shop when I was like 15, 16. I was always interested in seeing it. I'd never got to watch it, and that was Ghost Town. Which is from like the eighty, the late eighties, eighty eight, something like that. And it's uh, watched this last night. It was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's not sort of a horror Wild West hybrid, but it's sort of set in modern day. Well, modern day for them, the eighties. But uh, yeah, it's like a sheriff goes in search of this runaway bride, and he ends up going to this like, old sort of frontier town, and being terrorised by all these undead cowboys. And uh, it's it's really good. Some good effects in it. Good makeup. Uh, it was a very enjoyable movie, and that was the cover I remember seeing as well uh, in the video shop all them years ago when I was in my early to, like early to mid teens. And I thought that looked really interesting cover. There is a reversible sleeve on this, as you do get with them. That, the cover of that is on that, but there you go. That's the reversible sleeve. Now a decent artwork on the reversible sleeve as well. So uh, but I I have kept that original sort of sort of UK sort of VHS sort of cover. So I really do like that cover. Sort of, sort of shows you a lot about the film on it, but uh, another good release there from 88 Films, Ghost Town. Uh, definitely recommend that, that was a good one. And uh, got this for Father's Day off the, uh, off the wife and the kids. And uh, it is personally like one of my um, sort of all time favourite films, sort of. This, uh, it was one of the first ever horror films I'd watched as well. And uh, just basically got an upgrade to Blu ray. It's a fantastic little looking steel book as well. That's the Company of Wolves. Um, it's got like a sort of a, sort of a half sort of cardboard slipcase over the top, but that's that. But they do take that off. The 
cardboard comes off and you've got like a fantastic sort of image there you go it's come from nothing inside it is like basically nothing inside the tin but uh, still look but the yeah, the art you know the sort of the way it's sort of uh, presenting fantastic I do like that steel book a lot you've got the bottom to that on the back of the little cardboard steel book yeah company wall steel book got the DVD and the blu-ray in it um, not loads of extras but uh, not director's commentary uh, the ethical trailer steals gallery things like that but you know the film is superb it's not a bad transfer I see it's quite an old film it's uh, not a bad transfer at all uh, now the DVDs uh, Chambara Beauty she's also known as uh, One Chambara Beauty based on the video game but it's um, basically like sort of a sort of action pack, sort of zombie killing sort of type film. And, uh, it, was, it was good, it was pretty good. It wasn't amazing, but uh, there's some decent gore and some things. Uh, zombie makeup was pretty good. Uh, you know, well worth picking up if you're a fan of Asian horror, which I am anyway. Uh, this is another like a blind pickup from a charity shop. Apocalypse of the Dead. I don't know a thing about that one, so I can't comment. I don't know if it's any good or not. Uh, one from the 60s now. Night of the Eagle. Uh, this was really good, it was a really interesting movie, um, it sort of reminded me a lot like uh, Night of the Demon, or so I'd say Curse of the Demon in America, but it's uh, like a bit of a sceptic who um, doesn't believe in anything like witchcraft and that, and he finds out his wife's been practising witchcraft, and uh, she said she did it to protect him, and uh, it basically throws all the stuff away, uh, says it's a load of rubbish, and then bad things start happening to him, and he starts to sort of question whether or not the witchcraft really worked. But uh, that's the basic general plot of it, but it was a very interesting little film, very, very good, uh, pretty well acted in that, but Night of the Eagle, uh, if you're a fan of, say, Night of the Demon, Curse of the Demon, uh, very similar sort of movie in my eyes, it's very good. Uh, Exit Humanity, I've not seen this one, but I think this is set in the Civil War, American Civil War, like a zombie film set in the American Civil War, so I um, don't know a thing about that, but it sounds interesting. Uh, an old classic film from the 70s now with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. Uh, one I've been after for ages because um, I do try to get a lot of these type of films, but this one just you know just sort of eluded me for ages. Uh, and after Creeping Flesh, uh, I managed to get the Region 1 copy of that. And I got this at a really good price, like about £7, I think. And um, I saw this in Horicon and it was going for £25 in Horicon. I went there, it was after about £20, £25 for it. So I think that was a really good price. But Creeping Flesh, a classic sort of a, a British horror film there. Uh, double feature pack. I actually bought this for Bad Dreams. So I wanted to see. I, I had Bad Dreams years ago on VHS, and um, I don't remember that much about it, but I really wanted to see it again. But um, started watching Bad Dreams. But I was exhausted that night. I, I think I fell asleep halfway through. It looked good. But then I started I put Visiting Hours on the following day, and that was a superb movie. Um, I'd never even seen that before. Never even heard of it. And um, Michael Ironside plays the bad guy, and he's like a. He sort of kills this. Um, it's like a news, like an anchor woman, news anchor woman. He tries to kill her, I should say, not kills her, but he tries to kill her. Uh, puts her in hospital and finds that she's still alive, and uh, tries to get back into the hospital to finish the job. But uh, Michael Ironside is really, really good as the bad guy now. But uh, you know, well worth picking up just for that, to be honest. But I did buy it for bad dreams because it is one I've had for years. But Visit and Evers was really, really good. Uh, another pickup there for cheap pickup from the market. Uh, Wendigo. Don't know a thing about that one. It's just like say, I think a pet picked that for a pound or something. So. And likewise with this, live feed, uh, still not got a chance to watch this one yet, but it sounds a little bit like Hostel, with, with added snakes, if that makes any sense, but I uh, don't know that much about that either, but this is another like, pound pick up off the market, but why not. And got this from a charity shop, Scary Movie 2, um, got the first one, but I've only actually got the first one at the minute, so I've got a second one as well now. Uh, these are a good laugh, this is probably my favourite of the ones I've seen, so I thought you know, it's worth picking up for that. Uh, this come today, uh, Return to Salem's Lot. Um, not really anything to do with the original Salem as lot. I haven't watched this for ages to be honest, I can't remember that much about it but I do remember it being completely different to the miniseries uh, of the original one but um, this is the Australian release because uh, the American release is like 20 odd pound for pre owned copy so this was like 3 uh, so I've uh, got that coming now, that's the um, Australian release of uh, Return to Salem as lot but I'll probably be watching this tonight because it's been a while since I've seen it so last time I watched it I think it was on VHS, so that shows how long it go, how long ago it was. Um, one from 1970, which is a bit of a sort of obscure-ish one, but um, Cauldron of Blood, which has got uh, Boris Karloff in it. But um, look at the image of it there. Do you think it's a bad guy? But he's actually far from it. Uh, he basically like um, it's a bit like a Murders in the Wax Museum type of film, I suppose, in some respects, where uh, he's like a, a wax sculpture, and um, he uses basically like real skeletons to 
build the wax out because he's blind and uh, he has to use a touch. And um, but basically, he doesn't know where he's getting skeletons from. He thinks he's buying them from um, you know, sort of uh, medical, you know, sort of doctors or people who work in the medical profession there. And it ends up that uh, someone's actually supplying him with the skeletons, like the body's burning, it, burning them away in a big acid bath, which he's got that. And then giving him the skeletons to build uh, wax models on. So, but yeah, he doesn't sort of know anything about it. He's not really a bad guy in it. He's just a uh, guy gets used, I suppose, in some respects. But very interesting film. Not brilliant, but um, it was at that sort of time Boris Karloff was sort of doing a lot of really cheap sort of like Mexican horror films and stuff. And I think this is one of the sort of better ones from that sort of era that he did. Uh, Cauldron of Blood there. Uh, Savage Harvest, this was on my wish list for a while, just uh, sounded interesting, read up about it and that, and um, I still haven't watched it yet, actually I must get around to watching this, but it uh, looks a little bit like sort of Mario Barber's Demons on the back, very similar sort of makeup by looks of it, but uh, it's uh, by Eric Stanz, who, um, he did a film called Scrapbook, which is supposed to be incredibly violent and gory, so probably be another gore fest, hopefully, it looks good though, it looks okay, so uh, definitely check that out soon, Savage Harvest there. Um, another one's on wish list for what seemed like an eternity and I just, I just couldn't get it, it was always unavailable, I couldn't even get pre-owned copies and then this turned up and it was um, Noroi the Curse and a lot of people have heard about this uh, a lot of people are saying scariest film of all time and it was it was really creepy actually, a really freaky film um, fantastic sort of found footage, uh, Japanese found footage film um, really really unsettling and the last sort of 10 minutes is just really intense the sort of the end of it especially the, well, right at the end but uh, it is a fantastically atmospheric sort of found footage one of the best found footage films I think I've ever seen to be honest uh, ranked very highly uh, not only the curse I think you can watch it on YouTube somewhere I think the whole film is on there somewhere definitely recommend at least watching it once really good if you're, especially if you're a fan of found footage definitely one of the best ones um, one I got from a local market in uh, Infernal don't know a thing about that one uh, charity shop pickup Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday, Friday the 13th, I think it's going to be like another scary movie type clone, but uh, I've heard mixed reviews about this, some people said it's okay, some people said it's terrible, we'll see, maybe one or two famous faces in it, but yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, We're Going to Eat You, which is another one that's been on my wish list for an eternity, and um, this has got managed to get the American Region 1 copy, which was brilliant. Uh, so everything's sort of in English on it, all the uh, extras, whatever in English. It wasn't like, a lot of extras, mainly trailers and things like that. But uh, this is a really, really bizarre sort of um, sort of kung fu horror film, I suppose you'd call it. And um, it's hard to describe it really, but sort of a bit like ravenous with with the hills of eyes with kung fu, if that makes any sense. Um, these guys chasing this sort of convict and uh, he escapes to this village anyway and this sort of uh, cop sort of this police and follows him and um, basically all the people in the village are like cannibals and they have to sort of work, work together team up and try to get out basically escape but it's very very funny it is more of a horror, a horror comedy uh, very funny movie some brilliant sort of fight scenes in it some amazing choreograph as well choreograph fight scenes in it uh, really really good uh, Beyond Dreams Door, which is another one that's uh, it's pretty obscure, pretty hard to pick up, and it, it just appeared at a good price. So I thought I'll get it and watch it. And um, it was quite good. It was okay. It was a very very confusing film. Um, it was like a film within a film within a film. Um, some decent gore effects, uh, some not so good gore effects as well. I think it's quite a bit of a mixed bag, but um, very sort of ambitious, sort of unusual movie. I think with a bit of a bigger budget than that, he probably could have done amazing things with this, but uh, I think it works well, you know, for the budget, for the low budget he had, uh, the acting's decent, um, now there's a few sort of slightly irritating pauses in between, you know, some of the lines, the delivery of the lines, but uh, generally it's not a bad, not a bad film, I did enjoy it, a very unusual sort of movie, and to top it off, um, one of the best blind buys I think I've bought in ages, this one, uh, I don't know if anyone's heard of it, I've, not, I've never really seen it on anything, but um, it's called He Never Died, and this is um, it's a fantastic movie. I, watched it, I went into this not expecting anything really, and I was just blown away by it. Uh, Henry Rollins is perfectly cast. Uh, it's basically a story about this loner, and um, basically he's like a cannibal. He's locked himself away to sort of protect himself from, from you know, himself and other people and that. And um, basically he has like a, a daughter that appears at his door, and... Um, he obviously doesn't want anything to do with it at the beginning, but he sort of like lets her stay for a bit, and then this like mob kid kidnapper, and um, 
Yeah, I guess I'll sort of hide his sort of craving for human flesh and things. He's like obviously like a cannibal vampire type character. Uh, but also, um, his daughter gets kidnapped. He has to go with this sort of sort of fight out all this mob and uh, to get his daughter back. And uh, it was really good. Actually, it was fantastic. It had a brilliant atmosphere. It was quite sort of gritty. Uh, a lot of very very dark humour in it. But uh, Henry Rollins made this. He was he was amazing in the role. Um, he never sort of explains sort of who he is fully either. He just mentioned um, he looks a bit like Fallen Angels. Like saying that because if you look at the back of the box, at the front of the box, it gives it away a little because he's got wings. But he hasn't got wings in the film. But he has got scars on his back there, which sort of suggests he was a Fallen Angel or something. But um, he finds out he's immortal. He's lived for hundreds of years as well, and you know it's just a really, really good film. Really cleverly done. Uh, very, very violent as well, especially in some parts. Uh, he just like rips people's throats off and eats them and things. Uh, it's really violent movie, but it's fantastic. So uh, that's the update anyway. Uh, try to get through it as quick as possible. Um, yep, yeah, uh, got a few. Not much. I've actually got much coming on the way. I mean, I've not really ordered much recently, so I'm trying to be a bit more selective for what I'm buying. But um, I am sort of running out of space a bit now. Since I moved house, I haven't got a big room anymore for, um, you know, to keep all my films. I've got basically like a long hallway, and all my shelves are just along this hallway. So uh, I am sort of struggling for space a bit now, but I'm sort of trying to select a few films that I really want. So uh, I have got, I think, another two on the way. But um, basically should be like looking around on markets and things, I think. And I'll try and get a few more Blu-rays, I think, so I've got a bit of space for Blu-rays. Just the DVD section is like really mad now. So um, anyway, uh, enough rambling on. Uh, thanks for watching the update, and um, see you again maybe three or four weeks again. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.